So many great tales have come from the history of the World Cup. Unexpected victories, incredible sides, and so many more unforgettable moments. But just how did this great tournament begin? To find out, we must wind our clocks all the way back to 1930, to a summer in Uruguay where 13 teams battled it out to become the first ever World Cup winners. This is a story of the first ever World Cup. The concept of the World Cup was conceived as a result of football not being a part of the 1932 Olympics in the USA. The International Olympics Committee decided to not include the sport due to its lack of popularity in America. FIFA were keen to professionalise football, but the Olympics was only open to amateurs, and so FIFA President Jules Rimet came up with a new concept, a tournament every four years that would decide the champions of the world. It would be known as the World Cup. The choice of host would be Uruguay. As the champions of the 1924-1928 Olympics, they were considered the best team in the world. Without any frame of reference, there was a great deal of improvisation for the tournament. It would be the only ever time the World Cup did not have a qualification process. Instead, all 41 members of FIFA were invited. The British Isles had all split from FIFA in 1928, and so had formed no part of it. Many European countries expressed interest, but with the majority of that era's players being part-time, they had no desire to take a grand total of three months away from work. In the end, there was a total of 13 teams. Initially, Uruguay were outraged at the refusal of European teams to take part, and threatened to withdraw from FIFA as a result. Jules Rimet ended up persuading his home nation of France to partake, and three other European teams would be persuaded to join. Eventually, the 13 participants would be Argentina, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, France, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, Romania, the United States, Uruguay, and Yugoslavia. Egypt, Siam, and Japan were also due to participate, but they ended up withdrawing. In an age before common air travel, many of the teams travelled by boat. The Conte Verde would set sail from Genoa with the Romanian team, picking up the French, Jules Zemay with the trophy in his suitcase, the Belgians, and the Brazilians on the way. Two weeks after setting off, the boat arrived in Uruguay. Yugoslavia were going to join this boat, but it was fully booked. They took a boat of their own, and were supposed to pick up the Egyptians, but the Afghan side missed the boat due to a storm, and would be left at home. Eventually, all the sides were in Uruguay, and the tournament was ready to begin. It had been a painstaking task, with over a thousand workers breaking their backs day in day out over six months, to build a stadium in Montevideo, the Estadio Centenario. However, it would not be fully ready until five days into the tournament. All of the matches would take place in the Uruguayan capital. The tournament would take a group and knockout format, so that the teams that had travelled were guaranteed more than one game. The first ever World Cup match took place between France and Mexico on the 13th of July 1930. In front of around 4,000 people, Lucien Laurent would be the first ever player to score in a World Cup, as he gave France the lead. The French would win 4-1. The tournament was proving to be a success, with not a single game finishing 0-0, and seven games had four more goals. Out of the four groups, Argentina would advance from Group 1, Yugoslavia from Group 2, Uruguay from Group 3, and the United States from Group 4. The first semi-final would take place between Argentina and the USA. Argentina played dirty, with a challenge breaking the leg of an American player. A mass brawl broke out, which saw an Argentine knock four teeth out of an American player's mouth. In protest, USA coach Bob Miller ran onto the pitch, but fell, and as a result, smashed a bottle of chloroform in his pocket, which ended up knocking him out. In the end, Argentina won 6-1, sealing a spot in the first World Cup final. The next day, Uruguay responded in kind, defeating Yugoslavia by six goals to one. The first ever World Cup final would be between two rivals. In front of an estimated figure close to 70,000 spectators, Uruguay faced Argentina, a replay of the Olympic final two years before this Uruguay had won. On the 30th of July, 1930, history would be repeating itself. Uruguay took the lead in the 12th minute from Pablo Dorado, but Argentina levelled the scores eight minutes later. 
the Argentines turned the game around to go in at half time, 2 1 in front. The Uruguay coach, 31 year old Alberto Sapici, rallied his players, and they emerged for the second half with fighting spirit. Jose Pedro Sia brought them level with 57 minutes gone, and Victoriano Iviate put them in front 11 minutes later. And in the 89th minute, Hector Castro, a forward who had lost one of his arms in a farming accident when he was a boy, scored to make it 4-2 and crown Uruguay as the first ever winners of the World Cup. Jules Rimet, the man who had coined the idea, would present the trophy that would later bear his name to Uruguay, as they were the first team to lift it in the air. It had been a bizarre and chaotic tournament that so nearly could have been given up on, but it was the dawn of a new era for football, and the beautiful game has never walked back. In the 21 World Cups that have happened since the summer of 1930, so many more incredible moments have occurred, from Carlos Alberto to Jeff Hurst to Andres Iniesta. But none of this were to be possible were it not for this summer of 30. Over 90 years on, from players setting sail to South America, the impact that those two weeks in Uruguay had on the game is immeasurable. Football would not be the same game without it, and it is important to remember that every journey has its first step.